fiddle yards working. Hi, welcome back to Holton Warren 009. I'm Mark and it's like a sauna in the shed today, but that hasn't stopped me. Um, at the end of the last video I said about having to sort out some fettling on here because I had a number of derailments and a sticky point all sorted. Take a look at this. Hey, big smiles, it works. Actually, two big smiles. One, this works. Two, I've just filmed all this. Just went to check it on the camera and switched the camera on. What am I like? Oh, I don't know. Talk about time wasting. Right, so, as you said, this is now all works. I have learnt so much over the last couple of days getting this fixed. And... I suppose the easiest thing to tell you is what the issues were and why I've learnt and what lessons I've learnt um, in the process. So the, the problems we had was we had derailments. We had derailments on these two lines as they came into the points. We had a problem with derailments on this track as it came into this point. Two different reasons for it. First reason for these two points was that there was, and I mentioned this at the end of the last video, the gap between that outside rail on that on these two sets of points and this inner rail on these two loops the gaps between the rails was too big now there's two issues that they raise and for those of you that work in Engage or 009 you will know how tiny the wheels are on locomotives coaches and wagons now I knew that but what I hadn't realised was there is no tolerance on your track work. It has to be spot on. So the first thing is, if you've got a gap and you've only got little wheels, along comes the wheel, finds the gap, and it goes through it rather than go over it. So it throws off your wagon or your coach or your loco to the side. Um, the other thing is, on these joins here I'm using the plastic insulated fish plates and again for those of you that use 009 or Engage you know how flimsy how soft those are you've got the two I don't know what they call shoes if you like where the rails slide into them and then you've got that thin membrane in the middle to stop the rails actually touching now if you don't put your track fully into those kind of shoe things that hold them in place you can get some movement because as I said the fish plates are quite soft so you either get side to side or up to down up and down movement and you get the alignment out 
when the alignment's out you get a little bit of a step and it's it just it only needs to be tiny but once these tiny wheels of this stock in 009 or engage hit it that's it it's got your stocks gone so what I've had to do is lift these up uh, on both the the loops that needed fixing I've taken it around to about two thirds of the way around that's given me room to move the track so I've brought it back, measured off again to where it's got to go and cut the track to fit and then I've brought the track in as far as I can to make sure that they are definitely touching those membranes in the centre of the isolated fish plates and that the alignment's correct, there's no movement and there's no gaps and I've nailed it back in place. But what I've also had to do is make sure that I've maintained the 12 inch radius on these loops. I have got a Linton and Barnstable, I think the Manning Wardle engines, and they are long. They have a pony wheel, then they have three driving wheels, and then they have another pony wheel, but there's gaps in between, so they are a long loco. They won't cope, as far as I know, with a 9 inch radius. The recommendation is a 12 inch minimum radius, so that's why I've had to keep these to that size. So that's those two. This was slightly different. I've had to replace the whole of the track on this side with a longer piece. The reason being is the shorter piece that I use meant that you've got the straight coming out from the points and then you've got the curve or loop coming in and I was starting the loop at the joint with the point. So you've got a little sharp kick so that again, in comes your coach, hits that, throws it over the top. It wasn't affecting the locos because they're a lot heavier, but it was affecting the coaches. So what I've had to do, as I say, is replace that with a longer piece of track. The track now comes round into a curve, but now it straightens out for the last inch, inch and a half, and then it lines up and aligns properly with the points. So you haven't got that, you've now got that. And the coach, therefore, starts to straighten up before it reaches the the point and it won't throw. As I say the reason for this is my appalling track laying. When I laid this track I wasn't aware that the tolerances, you can't have tolerances, not with wheels that small. I was in a bit of a hurry to get it done, I was trying to film it at the same time which meant it took a bit longer and yeah I rushed it, I didn't pay attention to it, I didn't do the best job with it and it's cost me time. I've had to it took me a day to lay the track in the first place. It's taken me a day and a half to relay it now and get it right. Should have done it right in the first place. Going forward, I will make sure my point work in future is as perfect as I can make it. Point work, track work, done. The other issue was, you probably saw in the last video, every time the engine got to, well not every time, the engine got past that point 16, just stopped. So it was intermittent, which are always the worst sort of issues to find because you do something, it fails. You do it again, it doesn't fail. And you go, what's going on? How am I going to find this? You test it and it's fine, 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 fail. Fine, 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 fail. Doesn't make life easy. Anyway, looking at it, I cleaned the track again. I checked the wiring. Um, while I was doing this actually I had a joint, um, a solder joint that fell apart so I knew I had an issue with some of the solder. So I rechecked the uh, soldering as well. I did effort, all the checks I could think of and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at it and I start running the train again and yeah when it was fast crossing it straight across no problem. Slower speeds was when it stopped so I'm thinking Narrow gauge only runs about 10-15 miles an hour. Into the, these loops I want it to be as slow as possible. I don't want it hitting something and flying off. Um, going over the points you need a nice steady slow speed to do it. And I'm thinking the train comes around there and stops. This is all redundant. If I can't get the train to come into these areas what's the point of them? Yeah, I might as well just put a loop and they go back up. So anyway I'm thinking all this through and in the background I can suddenly hear click Beep. Click, beep. I think, what's that? So anyway, having a nose round, I suddenly realised that my NCE power cab is still on, and 
it's telling me there's a short. So that's where it is. That was what the problem was. When I'm driving the train round there at speed, it's going over the point onto the next section of rail and it's kind of bypassing the short because it's going across from one to the other quick enough that it's, you know, it's not picking it up and it keeps running. Going slowly of course it goes around there, picks up the short and stops. The reason for it was that when I went to film the last video I made the mistake of putting all the dropper wires or the feed wires down into blocks so that I could power up the whole of this track on here with the power cab. Then it occurred to me that I didn't need the first two sections to be wired in because that would cause a short so I took the wires off. What I forgot was that the wires around this side change from black to the back to red and I should have put them into the um, terminal blocks the other way around so as soon as I did that it was fine it, it start working so uh, typical error isn't it anyway so I've learned a lot I've got it working I'm very pleased the next stage as I said on the last video is now this is working this will be moved down to the last section and bolted in place before I do that did I mention I'm going to put a block of wood on the back here and then a little screen so if the engines do come round too quick or if they do come round and for some reason they um, fall off the rails derail then they won't go over the edge and I'll be rummaging around trying to burrow my way in the corners to find them out so once that's down this is bolted downstairs on the framework and I can start on the helix now the plan on the last um, video was to start the helix possibly on Thursday because the wife's out my mum's phoned up she wants me help so I've got to go around there on Thursday so Friday I might get a day and then I might just leave it to next week and start the helix on Monday and then see how many days I can get through working on the helix without getting dragged off the garden centres or lunch or I don't know what she's got planned anyway till next time Enjoy the sunshine, even if it is like a sweat box in here at the moment. It is a lovely day out here. We had the thunderstorms yesterday, so today's a huge improvement. Enjoy your model railways. Enjoy your YouTube viewing, whatever you're doing. Um, and I'll see you hopefully in a week or two. Bye for now.